Hello and welcome to the biggest problem you will face with your laptop, desktop or any other computer. Boot times. Speed that you can turn it on. Now what we have here is my Acer 7540G turning on. This is using a SATA 2, that's 3 gigabits per second, at 54,000 RPM. And we're going to see how long it takes to boot up to Windows. Now when it boots to Windows, it's going to open the gadgets on the right hand side and Minecraft right in the middle. So I've timed this five times, so you can see them all on screen now. And we're just going to see how long it takes. And I'm going to fill in this boredom with how a hard drive works. So what do we have inside a hard drive? You remember from my other videos where I take magnets out of the hard drive, you get some nice neodymium super strong magnets out of them. But other than the magnets in there, there's a lot more stuff going on. You have each individual platter. Now, desktop hard drives, you can have three, maybe even four platters in one. And you have the spindle, which spins it round. You then have the read and write head, which is able to modify or read the magnetization of the material immediately under it. Now, that's the platter. So the platter can be made of aluminium or glass and ceramics. And data can be stored on either side of them. But why does it take so long to get the data off them? That is what I'm here to talk about. It mostly comes down to the seek time. It's how long it takes for the CPU to request a file and the hard drive to send the file to the CPU. Now this usually takes between 10 and 20 milliseconds, but times can vary depending on the age of your hard drive. Now why does this take so long? Well, the hard drive has to find where that file is on your hard drive. It is stored physically, it is not like a memory stick, and the file is inside some sort of chip somewhere, but it is physically on that hard drive. So, the actuator arm moves the read and write head over on the platter to the individual file, and only then is it able to send the file to the CPU. Now, there's other factors involved in this hard drive, such as the data rate. As I mentioned, this is a SATA 2 hard drive, which is only able to send at 3 gigabits per second. There is a newer generation of SATA called SATA 3, which can rather confusingly sends at 6 gigabits per second, which is about twice as fast as SATA 2. But as you can see, we're about two minutes in now, and the laptop still hasn't finished booting. You can see the ones on the outside. We've got our first boot, actually, on the bottom left. Now, that's gone, and we have... Minecraft loading up in the middle now, and we have the gadgets on the right on all of the other ones except the first one. Now, boot times seem to vary quite wildly using a hard drive, but why am I going to test a solid state drive? Well, that eliminates the seek time. There is no seek time essentially on board a solid state drive because it is a SATA connected memory stick. All the data is stored in one place on a solid state drive, it is all inside its giant memory chip. And finally, the laptop is booted. I have Minecraft. So here's my solid state drive. I'm going to open it up. So using this little knife, we can get inside it. This is the Samsung 830 Laptop Edition. It has SATA 3, so 6 gigabits per second. And opening the box, here it is. This is the 256 gigabytes version. And it is very light. So what else do we get with this? We're going to take this top off. And we have a nice USB to SATA connector. So this is for backing up your data or copying it over. Either way, it's a good tool to keep. Uh, in here, we have nothing because, well, we have a piece of plastic for mounting it if your laptop is deeper. And we have inside this nice plastic papery wallet thing, we have the lovely Norton Ghost software, which hasn't been seen since Windows XP, and the software for your SSD drive. Now, they aren't like hard drives, they're a little bit more intelligent, they need firmware updates, and you can even view more, more about them than the typical smart you can on a hard drive. So here it is, SATA connections, just pretty bog standard, it's a box with SATA connections. And to backing up your data, you can either use the USB stick thing, or you can just plug it into your PC along with your old laptop hard drive, you can see it says LW on it, and use this lovely software from Minitool called Minitool Partition Wizard Home Edition. Select your laptop hard drive, and select your solid state drive. In the copy disk wizard, fit partitions to entire disk, yes that sounds right to me. So I'm converting down from a 500 gigabyte to a 256 gigabyte, and well, it sorts it all for me. You press finish and apply, and away you go. It will copy your laptop hard drive to your solid state drive, and here is the results. We have a much faster boot. I'm just going to tell you that now. It's no big secret that solid states are faster. So turning on, we have the Acer BIOS. Sorry, I can't get these in sync. My processor is not good enough when I'm editing the video. It's just not good enough anymore. 
but for now we'll have to make do. So we're starting up Windows now, we're just going through the nice animations and we're going to jump on to the login screen any second. We have top right in the winning. I should state here that I cloned the hard drive. I did not copy it, I did not reinstall Windows. They are exactly the same apart from the solid state software I had to install on the laptop. That is the only difference. But look how much faster it is. Now the only problems with the solid state drive have been the capacity and the price. But recently the price has hit the floor, you get less than a pound a gigabyte now and the capacity is ever increasing. And look at the times, there is such a difference there. Now I'm not sure if this was just a problem with my laptop, but I couldn't get the SSD software to work with my laptop at all. I'll have to find a way to work around these firmware updates. But anyway, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.